The last thing I want to talk about are, are appeals, and that's how Mark led this thing off. What about appeals? The court doesn't tell you anything about appeals other than the number of those people or the number of those people who were denied relief at the trial level who appeal to the Board of Immigration Appeals, which is the Court of Appeals for Immigration Cases. Now, they can later be passed on to the Federal Circuit Court of Appeals. And in Miami, all of our appeals went to Atlanta, to the 11th, Cir uh, to the, uh, 11th Circuit. But what about appeals? Well, specifically, this is true about appeals. The court says, or EOIR, not the, not the courts, but EOIR says that appeals are very low, that very few people file appeals. That's not true either. The court said last year that 8% of all cases were appealed. Well, they were using those big numbers again. People who never even filed a lawsuit were lumped in with that group. Well, you can't appeal unless you file a lawsuit. And any lawyer in this room knows that. In order to file an appeal, you've got to have a lawsuit first. You've got to have an application for relief. So let's just look at applications for relief. Let's just look at those people who filed lawsuits. In the last 10 years, 204,000 appeals, uh, 204,000 people appealed. Uh, 204,000 people were denied relief. 200,000 people appealed. 98% of everyone who is denied an application for relief, whose lawsuit is denied, appeals. That's not a low, that's not a low appellate rate. That's a very high appellate rate. But you don't get that story from EOIR. It's in their institutional DNA. They cannot tell the truth about the record. And I, and I don't understand why. Why not tell Congress the truth? Why not tell the American people the truth? We'd have a much better appreciation for immigration. And we'd have a much better appreciation for the judges and the lawyers like Ms. Ibarra. But for some reason, they don't tell the truth. And, and, and it doesn't make sense. But that's the state of our, our, our courts right now. One other thing I want to share with you. What's at risk here? At risk is American security. At issue is American openness. And at a disadvantage are our courts. What are needed are courts that rule with authority. When someone is ordered removed from the United States, let's take that 40% that never get any relief. Chances of any of them ever being deported is virtually nil. Now, the very fine congresswoman from Texas, who was certainly not a Republican, and certainly a student of history and of, of immigration itself, Barbara Jordan stated this, credibility in immigration policy can be summed up in one sentence. Those who should get in, get in. Those who should be kept out are kept out. And those who should not be here will be required to leave. For their system to be credible, people actually have to be deported at the end of the process. This is, we're not talking about winners and losers. We're talking about an effective immigration system that does the right thing by the legal immigrant who comes, who, who adopts the right measures of entry, and who thrives once doing so and those who enter the wrong way, who, in many cases, offer pitiful stories of, of crime-laden streets, of unsanitary conditions in which they are raised, and they offer the most, in the end, the most compelling case for America to extend its compassion beyond its borders and help in places where we're not helping. But opening our borders is not the solution and not fulfilling the purposes of courts is also not the solution. I'll finish with this, and then I think the panel has much more to say than, than I, I can possibly add. <clears throat> I want to quote to you and show you just how mis 
leading the statements of the of EOI are actually are. And these statements are consistent with their statements following the war on terror, its 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 advent through today, through the 2009 reports. These are in the budget statements. And I quote, the fight against terrorism is the first and overriding priority of the Justice Department. The application and enforcement of our immigration laws remains a critical element of this national effort. And EOIR, this is their statement. This is their budget statement. And EOIR remains an important function with regard to enforcement. Now, from 2005 through 2009, EOIR said the same thing, using the very same language, justified itself and its budget to lawmakers. But as usual, EOIR's actions never matched its words. It said one thing and it did another, all the while telling Congress that immigration courts are, and I quote, Front, the frontline presence, end quote, in immigration enforcement. Year after year, court records show that EOIR filed false reports and failed the high calling of federal service. That's the, that's the bottom line here. We're not getting the straight story, and if we did, we could fix it. But you can't fix a problem you can't identify. The public has a growing sense of unease with what's going on. Americans are, by their very nature, generous. And if we look at our, our history, compassionate. But we also are a rule of law nation. And rule of law is nowhere to be found at this time in these courts. And uh, Mark, I'll pass the, Thank pass you, the Mark. floor.